So my name is Brian Van Scoder. Um, I'm a principal solutions architect here at AWS. Um, a little bit about me. I've been with AWS now, closing in on five years. And during that time, I've worked um, across a variety of customers. I started off in what we call a greenfield space. So these are customers with little or no cloud um, usage at that point. So we're kind of growing them and, and helping them on initiating their steps into the cloud journey. And then as I progressed, I moved into uh, more uh, enterprise engaged customers, so larger scale engagements, having worked, uh, having established much more cloud usage. In, in my role today uh, as a principal, I'm actually what's called an area principal. So I engage with uh, customers all across the healthcare life sciences space, looking at some of their strategic projects. Um, so I thought based on you know, what I've seen over my, my time here, this topic of cloud center of excellence is something that comes up a lot. So um, let's kind of dive into what we mean by a CCOE. Um, though it is a four letter acronym, hopefully we won't find it to be like a four letter word by the end of this. But um, this first slide here, if you've attended maybe some other AWS sessions, perhaps at a, a summit or at reInvent or other conferences, you've probably seen something similar to this. And, and here what we're talking about are um, some of the key value propositions we see when customers are looking to move to AWS. Um, I find that customers typically are interested in agility and cost reductions. Um, that, and those are things that AWS provides, of course. And as such, um, they're also intent in building and iterating quickly because they want to take these new ideas to market, all while staying secure, compliant with their org policies, any regulatory requirements out there as well are all important things. Um, so these customers are generally builders and innovators, but they want to stay secure throughout that cloud adoption journey. And to do that, that requires them to build environments in AWS um, that they're going to launch these projects in. So another kind of way to think of this moving to the cloud or these ideas of modernization is really, you know, this is a business transformation challenge. And, and the good news, I, I think, for most companies is, is they are looking at the cloud in the right way, and they've they've developed what we would call a cloud-first strategy. Um, unfortunately, on the other side of this, you know, 86% still have of the total infrastructure and the workloads are still running on on-premises environments. And the reasons for this are really not so much technical. Um, as our friends at Gartner pointed out, you know, they've identified a lack of skills being kind of the biggest barrier to cloud adoption. So it's, it's skills, it's finding the right people, how do we train them, how do we get them up to speed on this? Um, in my role, I've seen customers struggle with their transformation projects um, by not having a true CCOE and or a cloud operations model. And in some cases, their initial migrations, uh, maybe they've outsourced to a vendor to help get this moving, but they do this without some plan or structure and without employee engagement of how they're going to take this forward after the fact. And that's generally has led to moves that don't deliver on the value props we looked at in that first slide. And that leads to the business losing confidence at right out of the gate um, and kind of puts you behind the eight ball to start this whole process. So in building out a CCOE, there's several terms for it. You know, and a component of the CCO is building that cloud operating model. The, when the CCOEs are looking at this, they find generally that the business and the IT are unaligned in their goals. So from a typical IT operating model, of course, it's focused on all aspects of applying and managing the technical landscape of the business. Um, often IT is viewed as a cost center, so there can be a lot of focus on efficiencies and keeping costs low. Meanwhile, our friends over on the business side, um, that's all about driving and delivering value to the company. So here they have an inherent need for speed because they want to bring those new ideas to the market well before their competition. So from our point of view, you need to really align these two sides. And to do that, you need a product-driven culture. So rather than each unit operating independently, we're collaborating, we're trying to, from an IT side, align to the business 
think about what are the types of products that we can be providing to um, the business side, how we can collaborate together to, to present those and make those available so that the business can then you know, build and iterate on these to deliver those new uh, business value to the company. So this is where CCO re CCOE really comes into play. It's bringing the, together the stakeholders and owners from both sides to align and deliver on a strategy. And that strategy is going to accelerate the business outcomes, but without sacrificing the IT outcomes. Um, so CCOE is, is a most important foundation on top of which uh, a cloud transformation is, is going to be established. So some of the key call outs is it's critical to have the business engaged in this process because um, you can build a new product or service from the bottom up, but that has a lower chance of success. Instead, we suggest that you engage with the business and similar to what we do here at Amazon, we always talk a lot about working backwards, right? Let's look at what the customer needs, what's the problem, work backwards from there and land on the desired outcome. So really taking that same approach um, as a part of the CCOE is a big driver for success. Uh, another call out I'd have here is, you see down in the lower right-hand corner uh, of the screen, there's several different names that CCOE might kick up in organizations. However, one you won't see there is an architecture review board or ARB. And I've worked with customers whose interpretation of CCOE was more of an IT focused ARB. So every step required ARB reviews, even the allocation of a new AWS account um, took six weeks to complete because of how they align their processes. So the ARB and or, labeled as a CCOE in this case, really became more of a, a bottleneck for transformation as opposed to an enabler that's gonna help the, the business grow and, and deliver on the promise of why they're moving to the cloud in the first place. So with CCOE driving definition and delivery of that operations model, there's several different value cases that come out of it. Um, so just picking at a few of them, we can think about things like governance. Um, we're going to look at, from the CCOA, we're kind of defining how applying, say, a multi-account strategy combined with the different cloud-native tooling and automation capabilities. You can build tailored and repeatable models for delivering different environments um, and to business units and that require different types of workloads in the organization. So instead of having to um, create bespoke uh, solutions over and over again, we can really package this and use that capability of automation of delivering um, based on our different types of areas of business we're delivering to. We also see efficiencies in our operations scaling. So achieving secure management at scale, establishing end-to-end -end life cycle management, gaining operational visibility, these are all things that get driven through that CCOE. And then finally, and really in the current days, um, Cost management is really a very key deliverable that everybody's looking for. So through the CCAOE and establishing patterns for self-service with different evaluated and approved configurations, say, for example, um, we might have uh, um, taking that three-tier app example, I think it was mentioned earlier in the day, maybe we were having a pattern for deploying that, but we're gonna limit the different types of instance types and sizes that we make available so that we can keep our cost controls in place. Um, and we can establish monitors and alerts around the budgets and the usage, provide some visibility and reporting and chargebacks back to the business organization so they can see the value they're getting for, for what the spend is. So two components um, of an organization's CCOE or cloud enablement engine um, we can start at the bottom and work our way up. Uh, the, the first is a cloud platform engineering team. And this is a team that needs to understand the enterprise standards and then apply them to this new paradigm of the, the AWS platform. So it's gonna require deep dives um, to embrace and apply the new models. And for example, you know how we look at cost on-prem is going to be different than in the cloud. So how do we develop and 
and provide ways to show that uh, and report that back to the business. Um, and this is not a one and done process either from an engineering team. Um, really, a cloud platform engineering needs to have a culture of continuous improvement. And that's needed so they can package and iterate and add to the different consumable services that they're making available to their self-service model. Uh, the other component is, is the cloud business office or CBO. Um, and this provides alignment and feedback loops to ensure that the platform is delivering desired value to the organization. Um, none of this works without adoption in the org, of course. So another key component of what CBO is doing is they're driving the onboarding and the training of um, our organization to, to achieve the, uh, the needed engagement within the organization going forward. So um, you've probably all worked on different types of rollouts within your company. Um, no matter how good the, uh, the project was in terms of delivering and creating a, pro a product, if we don't have engagement um, and usage within the organization, it's ultimately doomed to failure, right? So CBO is going to be really kind of the, the ones that are broadcasting and driving engagement with this new uh, cloud capabilities throughout the org. Okay, so far we've talked about some of the differences in how you work from a legacy and uh, a modern IT organization. Um, it's ultimately our point of view that as you shift towards a product-driven organization, that we advocate establishing what you'd call the cloud for the foundation team. So this is really that sort of starter CCUE that's going to evolve over time and build that, that larger enablement engine of the, of the full CCUE, right? So we have our, our components that we've, we're building through over time to establish that. But on top of this all, um, we still have business applications and software development teams. And um, generally, we find they kind of fall into really three different buckets in terms of what they're delivering. So that falls into sustain, optimize, and grow. So in that sustain model, this is where, say, the more traditional operations are still going on. So these are likely going to be the lift and shift type workloads where we've had them running on premises. We're bringing them to the cloud without really changing them or, or optimizing them for cloud usage. So applying that ongoing um, traditional operations model, we're going to have the cloud platform engineering teams still kind of work in place of what maybe a multiple infrastructure teams were providing on-prem. Um, as we move into optimize, here we're, we're implying more of a shared responsibility model. So now application teams are beginning to work a bit more with some of the, the cloud native capabilities or the cloud optimized capabilities. And the platform teams, they're providing the codified enterprise standards and the governance that's going to enable those application teams to iterate quickly but they're going to be able to do that without burdening them of knowing like the full implementation details of the underlying platform. And then that last bucket, this is more for those bleeding edge teams um, from a technology standpoint. You know, they're looking to consume the latest and greatest AWS services as soon as we launch them. So for this model, right, we have more of a blending of platform engineering and, and the application engineering. Um, working more of a, the app team is really taking on a lot more of those responsibilities because we're going to be diving into new areas where um, Platform Eng hasn't come out with package capabilities that can be easily delivered and handed off. So they're working forward, um, more forward-looking, building those new capabilities. So if you look at these models, you could imply that this, this kind of ties into your maturity, but, but actually, you know, in fact, we see really all three of these operating models in most companies. Um, but that being said, there is a gravitational pull back to this um, optimized capability, right? So from the sustain side, you know, when we do the lift and shift, ultimately over time, we're going to see the most value of our moves, uh, both from cost and capability delivery by starting to optimize those to take advantage of some of the higher level services that the AWS cloud provides for them. And then similarly, over on the grow side, right, as we're kind of breaking new ground into those new capabilities, 
we'll be looking for the platform engineering team to start to codify and, and package those capabilities, make those available back to the larger organizations, in uh, larger organization rather, through that optimized model going forward. So for all of this, right, we want to um, recommend starting small. So thinking about that cloud foundation team that we talked about, in the first six months, um, customers build a foundation team that's going to deliver on, say, a first pilot or maybe that initial project. And this is going to consist of, again, you know, multifunctional different parts of the organization. From an IT standpoint, um, it's important to have a cloud architect that's going to be translating our business objectives and the governance requirements into the new platform architecture, um, have platform engineers, and these folks are accountable for um, the product's technical feasibility and then ultimately delivery across the platform, the operations, and the security. And then last but not least, having some sort of scrum master, right? Because we want to be able to facilitate more of an agile process so that we ensure progress forward um, towards business outcomes um, by the product team. So moving on from there, you know, after those first six months, um, we're now into more of an, an initial CCOE phase. So here, the, the more structure of the cloud platform and the CBO is starting to form. Um, we're going to build on the outcomes and the learnings from that first project. Um, and then establish these uh, these groups around it so we can start scaling adoption. And then ultimately, coming out of that, we really begin to scale out the org um, with our established practices. The onboarding is heavily ramping up at this point, right? We want to be training people so that they can best take advantage of this and, and drive awareness throughout the organization, um, as well as we're going to focus in even more on this new uh, idea of a product alignment. So that might drive from having an initial cloud platform engineering team into multiple, because they might be supporting different types of products that are being built um, throughout the organization. Um, so to close things out, you know, the value of CCOE is delivered ultimately through better alignment between IT and business. Um, so we want you to be able to deliver on the innovation speed, security, and the cost goals that brought the organization to the cloud in the first place. And CCOE curates uh, the, ID, uh, the IT product-driven mindset around self-service and automation that's going to help you do that um, by first you know, enabling the organization to move faster, by having access to the right collections of services, and then second, you're building on a continuous feedback loop so you can learn from mistakes and ultimately improve your products. Um, additionally, the CCOE is going to drive the new ops model that takes a code and automation driven approach. And this is going to de-risk your operation security and deployments as you move into a larger scale. Um, so I encourage everybody to you know, con continue to dive a little bit deeper on the subject. So when these slides are shared out, put in some links here, some, some different reading on the topic, as well as a white paper. Definitely encourage people to uh, look into the Enterprise Strategy blog. It has lots of um, uh, great information on how other customers are working with the platform, as well as some of our uh, points of view on, on where we see people being successful um, as a large enterprise on AWS. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you all for uh, joining me today, um, as well as thank you, Ron, for the invite. I've provided my contact information in the deck. I'll also make that available to you all uh, in the chat after we wrap up here as well. So thanks, everybody.